Greetings folks, I have another 3D printer to look at now. This is the ANET ET4. It's a new budget priced entry level printer from ANET. Sent to me by ANET for the review, so thanks very much ANET. Uh, it does come in a cardboard box of course, but uh, we had a wildlife emergency uh, about a week ago. We had an injured possum in our backyard with a little baby on its back and we desperately needed a box to put it in so we could take it to the vet. And this was the perfect box, so <laughs> I took the printer out of it put the possum in the cardboard box and we took it off to the vet. Anyway, imagine a cardboard box. Okay, we'll unpack it and have a look inside. It's a really nice looking printer. Uh, and from what I've seen so far, extremely easy to assemble and easy to use as well. All right, so let's pull all the bits and pieces out anyway. A little bit of filament to play with. Uh, we have drive belts and that is a little bed leveling sensor that you can use for automatic sensing if you want to few tools there, uh, setup manual, nuts and bolts, there's a spare fuse, there's a spare nozzle, there's a USB card there. We have the hot end there, uh, which you'll have to plug in and pop on the gantry. Here's the gantry, all fairly much pre-assembled which is great, feels nice and solid. Bit of foam protection there. Ah, we have a sort of a plastic print surface or we have a glass print surface. That's a nice uh, option to have. I'm used to printing on this sort of thing. I haven't used glass yet, so I may start off with that because just that's just what I know. And here's the all-in-one bottom section. All the electronics are hidden in there, which is very nice, unlike the, um, what is it, the end of three that I've used before. Uh, that's a lot more exposed. So we've got power supply main board in there, cables underneath there, touch screen on the top there, and uh, more foam protection under there. Also in this part here we have the cable, uh, actually they've got an Australian plug on it which is great, and the filament holder. And that's it. Very cool. Alright, so next step is to check out the manual and put it all together. Actually before that let's go through some of the specs. So it's the ET4, it's FDM printer designed for PLA 1.75 millimeters i'm sure it can do other uh, filaments as well power uh, 200 watt power supply 240 watt print size is 220 by 220 by 250 which is pretty standard for one of these printers print resolution 0.1 millimeter slice thickness 0.1 to 0.3 millimeter standard nozzle is 0.4 millimeters hotbed temp uh, the bed temperature is less than or equal to 100 extruder working temperature less than or equal to 250 so it can't do the really high temperature printing i guess english or chinese has auto filament dispenser filament detection auto leveling resume printing and offline printing documentation we get is a nice little thank you where to get more information warranty card parts list setup manual which looks fairly well produced and a user manual which shows you how to use it and uh, how the LCD works as well. Alright so we'll just follow the manual. First step is to put the top frame on using these four bolts and the hex wrench provided and that just goes on like that so we need to get some nuts lined up first. It's one in. Once you get one in everything else will just go well. Start it off too.
So they're all tightened now. Now, I was wondering why the bed isn't moving at all. It's because it has this green sort of stopper uh, shipping plastic in, in the channel. So if you just pull that out, then you can move the bed. It's a bit hard to get out. There you go. So now the bed moves. We're going to check the belt. That's actually nice and tight as it is. If you need to adjust the tension of the belts, uh, the way you do it is actually to move the motor in and out. There's the, the belt coming around here, going to the motor there, and you can see the, the motor uh, is mounted in slots. So to tension the belt, you move the motor backwards and forwards and uh, tighten up these bolts here. That is pretty right as it is. So I'm going to leave that. And now we need to fit the hot end onto the cross gantry there. To do that, we need to lift this up. So we have some packing in here and a uh, cable tie. So we'll get rid of the cable tie, get rid of the packing, and we should, uh, should be able to move the gantry up. There we go, that runs nicely. A couple of fans there and a fan shroud, uh, which uh, pumps air onto the uh, nozzle. Filament tube there and the connections. That just slides on to the gantry. That, uh, if you need to adjust the tension on the, the wheels, there's a little eccentric nut under here around the bottom wheel. And you just rotate that around with a wrench so that there's no wobble, but you can sort of force these wheels. That's probably a little bit too tight, I think. You loosen off that nut. Now we're getting wobble. We just tighten it up a little bit just till it's tight. And yeah, that's about right now. So you can actually spin those wheels. But there's no wobble. That doesn't, that means these things don't uh, wear out too quickly and uh, you're not going to get any wobble. So the filament tube just pokes into the extruder, push it in as far as you can and pull that little stopper out and that holds it in there. We have a plug here, that's for the auto bed levelling if you decide to use it. We'll check that out later on, but I'll get it printing first. And we have all the plugs around here and they're all labelled so you, you can't get them wrong. Each plug has its own label and each socket has its own label. Now I'm going to fit the driver belt. Have some cable ties there. And here's the belt. Teeth go down. We just thread that along the channel. Wrap around the, the uh, toothed driver spindle there. And around the edge there. And then they come back and attach underneath into two little slots there. It's probably going to be better if I come from the other angle, actually. So you can see that just tucks in to those little fork thingos there. Bingo, there's one. And the other one. It's a bit awkward, but that fits in and the belt is pretty well tensioned. Hmm, very good. All right, I'll show you around the other side now. So if the belt was very loose, uh, it's not too bad really. You can undo these four bolts and, and move the motor out a little bit to tension. That's pretty right to start off with, I think. You want a fair bit of tension on it. Not super, super tight, but you don't want it flopping around loose. Now we need to plug all these things from the hot end into uh, the distribution board here. So we'll start down the bottom. We have temp TMP. Next we have fan one, there it is there. And that is all connected up. And underneath we have taped the big cable connecting from the main board up to the hot end there. And that comes out through the hole there. And comes up here and plugs in. And that can only plug in one way. There we go, that is clamped in. 
And you can actually poke that back in if you want to. All right, so a couple more cables to here. This is the Z-axis. Plugs in here. And finally, we have this cable here that must plug in there, I guess. So time to unwrap. And you can poke this back inside if you want to. There we go. And final connection, we have the power cable here. And last but not least, there's the filament holder. Pretty simple to put that together. This bolt's on there like that. And that bolt's on the top with the leftover T-nuts. These little T-nuts are clever little things. And you probably won't know how they work to start off with, but they kind of look after themselves. So you just put them in like that, line them up with the channel, pop them in the channel, keep them loose. Now when you tighten them up, they rotate around and lock themselves in. If all goes well. Yeah, that one did. If they don't rotate around, it'll pull straight out again. That'd be good. So now I, what I would do is just go back over all the nuts and bolts and make sure they're all uh, tightened up. Check your pulley tensions, uh, adjust the motors if you need to. They're all pretty tight, so they're good. Uh, same with the other motor down the bottom here. Pulley tension is good. Make sure they're tight. Yep, they've been tightened up nicely. And that was a ridiculously easy assembly, way, way easier than the Ender 3 for sure. That took uh, well, three or four times this, and there's a lot more adjustment and carrying on too. So very impressed with that so far. We're effectively ready to turn it on and um, level up the bed and try some printing. Now the lovely folks at ANET have given me some uh, PLA to play with as well, 1.75 dark blue and fluorescent yellow. So I'll try out some prints using these. Let's get into it. I'm actually ready to turn it on, but before we do, uh, we need to pull the uh, base clips off and there's a sticker protecting the aluminium base. Pull that off. Now, I guess we can stick this straight onto the aluminium or we can use the glass plate. I've never used a glass plate, so why don't I try that? I believe you may need to use adhesive or um, a blue builder's tape if you're using a glass plate, but uh, we'll find out anyway. We can pull this sticker off here. Grab the SD card. SD card plugs in the side here. Contacts facing up. All right, so now we're ready to switch it on. There we go. So here's the LCD. You can choose English, French, or uh, Chinese. So we want English, of course. Let's see, print. Uh, it's showing up nothing yet. Let's go back, prepare, change filament, level the bed, preheat, settings. So these are for moving the different axes around, uh, 0 0.1, 1 and 10 millimeter steps. And you can see as I, that moves it in steps of 10 millimeters, which is pretty cool. information about the uh, version company website and I believe you can upgrade the firmware uh, via the SD card too which is great you don't have to connect it to a computer there is a USB connection an old printer style connection over on the side there 
Now I'm doing some manual bed leveling. You start off with the plate all the way down. So you screw these little screw nuts here to pull the plate all the way down. Uh, and then we uh, have the manual, manual bed leveling here. Uh, and push all the numbers for all the different corners and just have the paper underneath here. Go down and just move the paper around and adjust the nuts until it just grabs the paper. There we go. So that was two. Now we'll go to three. It's grabbing it a bit too hard, so we'll just release that a bit. There we go. Now we'll go to four. Too loose. It's just grabbing it there. And you just go around and do this maybe three times and uh, your bed will be perfectly leveled. Let's have a quick look at the contents of the SD card. We get the user manuals, which is the same as the, the paper ones. We also get an FAQ PDF which goes through some of the common questions. You can have a look through that and work out, do a bit of troubleshooting. These are the drivers to connect the printer to your computer, Mac and Windows drivers. Uh, Slicer program, Cura, which is the one I use. Uh, it's only PC, but you can go to the uh, Cura website and download the Mac version as well. Repetia Host is another one, also just uh, an XE for PC, not for Mac. Slice and Print Connection, a few recommendations there. They recommend you use Cura as the slicing software or Repetia to connect uh, the printer to your computer. And we have, it looks like we have some suggested start code and end code there, but we won't worry about that for the moment. There are some print files on here. Uh, they are for actually for parts for the printer. There's the fan duct, filament detector, and detector mount as well. So I'll move those out to the root level of the SD card so we can actually see them on the LCD screen on the printer. And now we can we can see the files actually listed on the uh, LCD. A few little things to watch out for. You have to watch out for this cable here. Uh, because the printer goes all the way up to the top of the gantry when it homes at the start of each print, that cable can get squashed, so you just sort of have to flex it so that it sits out like that there. And also the uh, Z-axis screw has a couple of sharp little grub screws in there which can actually grab this uh, cable cover, which it did with mine and sort of wrapped it around. So I've put some tape around there just to make sure that doesn't snag the uh, mesh cover. This is the basic model ET4. Uh, it's not the silent version. You have to go to the pro version if you want the silent stepper motors. Uh, but this one, the noise isn't too bad at all. It's the same as pretty much all other printers, I think. That'll do it for this video. In the next one, we'll do some actual printing. I'll uh, have a play with the printer for a few days, work out how to get the prints working. So far, I've found this printer very, very easy to put together. It looks like it will be a, a very good first printer, entry level for beginners, and maybe even more advanced as well. Thanks for watching.